Praise the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 29, beginning at verse number one. First Chronicles chapter 29, beginning at verse number one. It says, Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God had chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace, uh, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for the things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and the brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood, onyx stones and stones to be set, glistering stones and of, of divers colors, and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affections to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Verse number, verse number nine. Then the people rejoice, for that they offer willingly, because with perfect heart, they offer willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Amen. Today we're going to finish our series on giving from the heart. Giving from the heart. Here we see David begin to tell the people and proclaim before the people what he was going to do for the kingdom of God. And he says, I'm going to do this over and above my original expectation. I'm going to give the, the things of for the things of gold, for the things of silver, for the things of brass. I'm going to just break it down, but I'm going to sow my seed for the kingdom, to build up the kingdom, amen? And then the Bible declares in verse 9 that the people decided that they would do the same thing with a willing heart. Their heart was perfect before God. In other words, it was mature before God. And so they, 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 they rejoiced because they had the ability now to give to God what he required of them, amen? And we said in previous lessons that, before I can, from my heart, give to God, I must give my heart to God. Amen. Because ain't no sinner going to give God nothing. Amen. And so we got to give our heart to God. And, and it's so easy to get saved. The Bible says that if I confess in my mouth and believe in my heart that God did raise him from the dead, that the Bible says I shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So salvation is very simple to, to, to do. I don't have to do any spiritual exercise. I don't have to belong to a particular denomination. All I got to do is confess Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. And at that moment, I, I, I get saved. Yeah. Amen. As a matter of fact, I really don't have to confess my sin. Right. Right. Amen. To get saved. To get saved. Because you don't even remember all your sin. So if, if, if the requirement was that you got to confess all your sin, you wouldn't get there. Because many folk don't remember what they done last night. Nevertheless, what they done 10 years ago. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I got to give my life to Christ. Amen. I got to give my heart to God. Now, go over to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter number 6. I found a principle here in the Bible that lets me know that wherever my treasure is, that's where my heart's going to be. Now, we can say we love God all day long. And it's so easy for us to declare that. But then we must look at where our treasure is, and that's going to tell a real story. Because it's not the profession of your mouth that matters. It's the performance of your heart and your actions that matter. That's right. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen? Amen. Bottom line, where your treasure at, that's where your heart going to be. <laughs> and I like to use a, 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 a very easy uh, example or illustration to, to help you understand what, what this verse is talking about in the natural. I tell every man that if you truly love your wife, she should be pampered. Amen. Ladies, y'all could have helped me out on that one. <laughs> y'all could have helped me. Y'all, y'all could have helped me on that one. Amen. <laughs> the brothers sit down like Pastor, why you going there, man? Because it, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. You could tell if a man loves his wife by looking at him. Amen. If she looked pitiful. Move on, Pastor. 
Bro, come on, bro. If she look better, what, what, what's up, huh? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo, Lord Jesus, don't. <clears throat> because, we, because we grew up <clears throat> in church that allowed adultery without saying anything about it. I, I, I'm prefacing what I'm going to say now by, by saying that. Because we grew up in church, that when adultery was rampant in the church, nobody said anything about it because everybody was doing it. Not here. Not here. Now, I was going to say this, because <laughs> uh, you ain't going to be committing no adultery here. Amen. I know about it. I'm going to bust you out. I will bust you out. Amen. Now, I was going to say this. Let me say what I was going to say. If a man who commits adultery, his girlfriend look better than his wife, that's where his treasure at. I'm serious. That, 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 I've seen it happen. It ain't right, but I'm telling you what happened. Let me get my lesson. Give him from the heart. Give him from the heart. Give him from the heart. Amen. Give him from the heart. Amen. <laughs> then I found out that people don't understand that your money, your, the money that you have, it's a weapon against the enemy. That's right. It's a tool to bring down the kingdom of darkness. It's a tool to build up God's kingdom. That's right. But if we don't have that mindset that this money that I have, this talent that I have, this time that I have, is a weapon against the enemy. That's right. We won't give from the heart. And, and, and that's, why, that's why I told God a long time ago, God, you can have anything I want, I, I have. Because it ain't mine anyway. It, it's on loan. It's on loan. Because what I have, God, it, God owns it already. He loaning it to me to see if I'm going to be a good steward with it. And many of you, God is looking at your heart right now and saying, can I give you more? And will you be a good steward of it? Will you use it as an offensive weapon against the kingdom of darkness? And, and boy, I, let me tell you this. Satan don't want you to know what I'm teaching you. He don't want you to know that your money is a weapon against him. See, what he wants to do is get you to think that everything that you have, you got to keep it. You got to hoard it for yourself. Because if you give it, you ain't going to have it. Well, that ain't the truth. Because the Bible said, whatever I sow, that's what I'm going to reap. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going I'm to get into that right now. Amen. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to get into it. Amen. Now, now also, also we found out on last week that when you're in your most desperate situation, what the Bible calls famine, that's the time you really need to sow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the time when you really need to sow. Amen. And we found it out. So you get the CD on last week. Praise the Lord. Now, go to Psalms 115. Psalms 115. Now, once I give from my heart, it causes a supernatural law to kick in into my life called seed time and harvest. It's a supernatural law that God put in force to cause us to increase in our lives. Now, many people don't know how to increase God's way. We look, at, we look at our society right now, and, man, people are hooking and crooking. You know, look, it, it, people trying to get you to, to get into a pyramid scheme. You know, if you get two people, then, then you could get more of this. And then if they get two people, then you get some of what they got. Then that ain't God's plan. Amen. I, I, get, I get several people coming to me all the time. Pastor, you know, you know, you're on TV, you know, if you, but if you can get some of these folk to, to, to get under your pyramid little thing, they don't call it pyramid, they call it something else. Uh, uh, you could be rich. I say, I am rich. And I'm rich God's way. And I don't have to prostitute God's people to get it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because, see, see what, what people understand is most people... Most people in church are going to hear that pastor's heart. And they're going to hear him and then do what, you know, sometimes what he say. Yeah. Amen. And so if the pastor say the scheme is a good idea, then everybody else say, well, it's a good idea. And he at the top of the chart, 
And so everything's feeding into him. That ain't God's plan. That ain't God's plan. Psalms 115, God has a plan for us to increase. Look at verse number 12. The Lord had been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. God says you're on his mind. Amen. And, and what he has on his mind for you is called increase. In every area of your life, increase. Say increase. 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 Amen. Abundance. That's what God has on his mind for you. Amen. But we need to know how to prepare for increase. Amen. Not only prepare for increase, but how to trigger increase. And not, how to, not only how to trigger increase, but how to sustain the increase. Because it don't make any sense for you to increase and then lose it all. Amen. Now, go to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter number 4. We have to prepare ourselves for increase. Look at verse number 1. 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse number 1. Are you there? <clears throat> Look what it says. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets of Elisha unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thou, thy, thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bonded. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house, Save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out unto all th those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon, him, uh, upon her and, uh, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell, th sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. So here's what the man of God told her. First of all, she said, Man of God, my husband sowed a seed one day. <laughs> Yeah, he dead, but I need to call on that seed. I need some wisdom right now. See, see, many times, even though your seed left your hand, it never leaves your life. And, and it might be a seed that you sold a long time ago. You could call on that seed. Then a man of God gave up a plan of action. He said, prepare yourself for increase. Amen. He said, go borrow some vessels. Bar, borrow everything that you can, but prepare yourself. Because supernatural increase is going to come your way. <laughs> and many people are not prepared for increase. Amen. You're not prepared in your mind for increase. That's why when increase comes, you block it out. I, I, I don't want that. If, if, what if, if I get that, then people are going to talk about me. I, hey, look, I figure this way. They're going to talk about you anyway. Get the increase. Amen. But you got to prepare for it. And then the man of God said, now, go in. And see, this lady, was, this lady had an oil company before ExxonMobil showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so, uh, so, so she got the vessels. Her and her sons began to, to do the work, to do the work, to do the work, <laughs> to do the work. That's going to be a point. You got to get this now. To do the work. You got to work at this thing. See, see, God has his part to do, but you got your part to do. And one of the points, one of the points I'm going to make in just a few moments is to, to maintain increase, you got to work. Don't you know the Bible says that if you don't work, you don't eat? It wasn't no welfare system for God. He said, you hungry? I got a plan for you. Go to work. <laughs> 